It'll be a remarkable two days. Uh, and I say that with high expectations, but in large part because of the expertise and the experience that's in the room. And most of what will really happen will be the, the, the casual discussions for that, that serendipitous uh, comment, a little idea springs forward. And that takes two days. And it takes a few breaks, and lunches, and, and receptions like tonight. But it also takes a very well-organized, um, structured uh, conference, which we have today and tomorrow. You're going to have the opportunity to hear from experts on rural education. You're going to have the opportunity to engage with your peers from uh, throughout the Southeast. You're going to have the opportunity to engage one-on-one, -on -one, to interact one-on-one -on -one with those experts who are experts in the sense that they do have an intimate knowledge of what works and what doesn't work in improving rural, rural education for our students. Our rural schools face challenges, and some of them are different challenges than our urban center. In addition to having a larger percentage of rural schools here in the South, we also have a larger percentage of underperforming rural schools. So in designing this summit, we've done so to address the unique barriers, those things that are out there that we know that we can bring down by doing things a little smarter with a little more information calling upon our peers to share what opportunities we have to bring those down. Strategies to improve K-12 education and boost student achievement are fundamental, are key to building thriving communities, prosperous communities, to creating jobs, to economic development, to realizing the American dream, to the greatness of America. For our rural communities, the connection between, between a quality education and a vibrant, sustainable economy has never, ever been clearer. Unfortunately, that connection, that, that, that nexus between education and rural economic health has not received the attention it deserves. And that's why we're having this conference today. Not to fill a gap, because that's what we're always doing, but to say this is the focus, this is important. We're gonna be fast moving today. I'm a surgeon, I like to cut, fix things, that's it. So, it's good not, you've heard you know, all the sort of welcoming and all, and, and that is sincere, but it's done. And from now on, fasten your seatbelt. I just returned from a trip to Europe and Canada, where we were meeting with automotive OEMs and tier one suppliers. The first question every employer asks is the quality of our workforce. What level of educational attainment do you have in your state? You know, I'm looking around the room, and all of these different groups are represented, any of whom could share those best practices. And that's what we're hoping to do over the next two days, which is share this for business leaders. What can you do in your communities by partnering with school? If you are a member of a not-for-profit organization, I know our United Ways and our YMCA's and others are philanthropic foundations who are generous grant givers through the process. They're becoming more than just the grantee or the grantor, they're becoming the partner in the process, really looking at what's, what's working very well and then ramping it up to scale. And so I think everybody has a role. You want alignment against a goal, you want alignment against a broad vision. But if you're going to have innovation, you can't have too much alignment. And um, I think one of the challenges, as you think about the business community's engagement and the education community's engagement and the higher ed's engagement, um, is people have to push each other and get each other outside of their comfort zones.